My name is Quincy Davis. If you're new, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I do a lot of lessons in case you haven't discovered yet, so you might want to consider subscribing. All right, so this lesson is all about the brushes. It's an essential tool if you want to be a jazz drummer, if you want to play jazz um, you casually or seriously, however you want to play it, you got to do with the brushes, but they are humbling because there's no, no natural rebound. They don't rebound like sticks, so we have to work a little harder to get the feel and the sound, right, that we, that we can kind of naturally get with sticks, um, and also the speed and agility. So, uh, but today I'm going to be just breaking down a basic, basic swing pattern that you can use at many different temples. I'll play it at a couple different temples for you. All right, so I'm going to break this thing down. But first, I need to know, are you ready? Are you guys ready? Spicy Rich, Joe War Booker, Mr. Vernes, I know you're watching. Are you ready? Well, let's get into this thing. We're going to get into this thing. Everybody's got to have a good brush pattern for different tempos. This is it right here. This is all you need if you're getting started. So I'm going to break it down. One, a one, two, three, four. Notice what my right hand is doing. And notice where it's playing on the drum. Right? It's middle to side, middle to side, right? Okay, so I, I do it again. Three. One, two, a three, four, a one, two, a three, four, a one, two, a three, four. And you gotta keep, with brushes, it's very important to keep the same pattern because different parts of the drum sound different. And if it's always changing, then you uh, prevent creating a, a real consistent groove, right? Also, notice the feel. Ah, can't stress that enough. The feel of the right hand is so important. You can't just go, And I know some of you are like, oh my gosh, why is he doing that? Well, because there are some drummers who don't realize how important paying attention to the feel of your right hand is to the feeling of the song. So if you're, if you're especially with brushes, because there's no natural rebound, right? So it's easy to be lazy and try to rely on a rebound or a bounce that's not there. So you gotta work a little harder at creating a snap snap see that messed me up okay and I'm and, and if you practice doing this in the air and kind of stopping the brushes kind of abruptly you'll get a certain amount of clarity and a staccato sound right um, and you don't always want the sound but it's good to have that technique because some especially when you're playing root See, there's that staccato uh, sound that gives clarity to the brushes. So it's a good technique to practice, even if you want more of a legato uh, sound. So I'm using that technique to get that clarity and to get that bounce. Bounce, 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 a bounce, bounce to the ounce, ounce, uh. Don't be lazy with the right hand. Now, I have to say also that um, there's different levels of articulation that you may or may not want in your right hand. So just because I'm showing you this doesn't mean you always have to go for that level of articulation. You can, you can be a little more fat with the sound if you want and kind of let this, the, the brush lay there. You could do something like that which is also really cool sound. Right? And I, I'm essentially using more of the wire for my, for my right hand uh, ride beat. It's more of that kind of thing. Okay? By the way, I should say this also. You can also go the other way. I don't highly recommend it, but I use it sometimes. And I used to only use this way. Um, one, two, a three, four, one. So I'm going one and three are in the middle as opposed to on the, on the outside. And as you get faster, 
this gets harder and harder actually it's a it's a less natural uh motion than going out it's much less this is more natural but this sounds good as well at slower to medium tempos it's cool okay so left hand So as I said, it's really important to, to pass through the same part of the drum at all the time uh, at at the same time of the of the measure, right? So if I break down my left hand, and some people go clockwise, some people go counterclockwise. I go both ways. Um, I'm most comfortable going count counterclockwise because that's how I started. But I can go. I'll do both ways so you so you can hear the difference so you can see the difference. Okay, so first counterclockwise. One, two, three, four. Now take my right hand away. Three, four, one, two. So one and three is passing through the middle. On beats one and three, I'm passing through the middle. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Okay, and then I'll add my right hand. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Right? And also, it's very important to realize how the, the, um, the left hand affects the tone of, your, of the drum, and I'll explain that. So listen to the difference between no pressure in my left hand. As you can see, I'm more on the tips, the Q-tips, if you will. Um, of the of the wires right so in this way if you have the snares off which I always prefer you can really hear the tone of the drum and if you listen to, to someone like a uh, Papa Joe Jones he keeps the snares off and so he has a real resonant sound and he doesn't use a lot of pressure in the left hand so you get this sound but then as you add more pressure in the left hand the snare, the sound of the drum gets drier. You hear it? And that has a, a very different sound. Which are, they're both, they both sound good. Depends on what you, you're going for. And sometimes I'll use both, right? Maybe on one section of a song, I'll use more of an open sound. And then when I want to dig in or something, I'll, I'll dig in like that. Okay? Now I'm going to go clockwise now. Clockwise. Clockwise. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Ah! So now my left hand is essentially going, uh, passing through the middle of the drum on beats two and four. Right, and it's not exact, right? If you really break it down, it's kind of the the and of three or and of one and of three. But we're not going to get overly technical with the with the with that. Okay, so this is kind of what it looks like going counterclockwise, and I add a little more pressure now. Okay, so another thing that's really important to be able to do is just add accents here and there to accentuate the swing. And a very typical uh, place to accent when you're playing time with the brushes is the and of three. So it's, uh, it'd be really good for you to work on adding this accent in either hand on the and of three. And it's kind of something that you hear tap dancers do. A lot of things that, that drummers historically have play on the brushes, uh, drummers take their cues from their cues, no pun intended, pun intended, um, from tap dancers, actually. So um, here's a typical 
accent on the end of three that you can work on. Two, a one, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Here it is. Here. One, two, three. Got it? Here. And in, in the right hand, and then in the right hand, you can add a little splash, splishy splash in the hi hat kind of come right after this. Ah. Ah. And if I'm going clockwise, ah. <laughs> right? If I'm going clockwise, that and of three comes here. You're kind of going down. You see that? Okay. You see that? Ooh. Okay. A little splash. Just a little quicker, and I'm just gonna play a little bit. One, two, three, four. Right? By the way, if you're interested in this bass play along, I highly recommend it. You can uh, download it from my digital download store. The link will be down below. It's an awesome way to to really work on your time with an actual bass player. Highly recommended. Right? Remember, we're trying to keep that bounce. You hear the bounce? Oh, I switched it up. See where I am now? One and three are in the middle. Go back and compare the sound and or feel. Now go clockwise. Uh -uh. Ah! <laughs> it's hard to switch right in the middle for me. Here we go. You see, one and three now are in the middle. And I'll switch it the other way. Right? Now let's see what it sounds like the other way. There we go. Switching is <laughs> difficult. For me, that feels better. Wonder how it sounds to you. Right? Okay, so let me play a little faster. Right? Still trying to find that bounce. Now I'm gonna be a little less articulate in my right hand for just kind of a fatter um, ride feel in the right hand, okay? So essentially I'm doing this. So 
I'm letting the wires bounce a little bit and I'm being less controlling and less articulate. How's that sound to you? Let me, let me know in the comments down below. What do you prefer? They're both great sounds. And I don't think you need to be exclusive um, either way. You can, you can incorporate all different approaches. Okay, now I'm gonna go clockwise. I got it. <laughs> okay. Ah. Woo! All right, so that is the lesson on brushes and how to create a good feel with a good sound for a basic swing groove um, with the brushes. Um, and you know, you, it's something you gotta practice a lot. Practice every day um, and you'll get more comfortable with them and realize they're very different than sticks, but in a lot of ways, they're also very similar. Um, and everything you can play with the sticks, you should practice with your brushes. Practice your rudiments with your brushes. In fact, maybe I'll do that, maybe that'll be another video. Um, because that is very, 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 very important. But um, until then, hey, don't forget that if you're interested, you can download that bass play along. It's great. I use it all the time for my own personal practice, and I think you'll find a lot of benefits out of using it. So check it out. The link will be down, to, down below. And as always, practice hard, but practice smart. Take care.